Welcome to Your Mental Breakdown, the podcast where you get to follow along with a client in real therapy sessions. And you'll hear two licensed psychotherapists breaking it down afterwards so you get a better understanding of what we do and how we do it. This week, we talk about how our relationship with time can create pressure and stress, and how camping, glamping, and napping can help you get away from it all. In the session, Drew continues to process his recent breakup, and he sees a definite shift in his perspective. In the breakdown, we highlight how Drew feels more strength in himself and has been walking his own path and making his own choices. Stick around. I am Doug Friedman. And I am Meredith Levy. And this is Your Mental Breakdown. The podcast. Indeed it is. Have I always said that or is that new? I'm not sure, but I like it. I like saying it. It's funny. There's, there's a rhythm with the, you know, being remote, being zoomed. That's different than our in-person rhythm. Totally. And we're getting used to it, but it's just freaking different, man. I don't know that I want to get used to it either, but I hear you. It's interesting because I am very much ready to be back in person with people and seeing people for real and interacting with them. and. I'm also a little hesitant to get back into my regular routine again. And Oh, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's kind of nice. I actually can like make breakfast for myself instead of eating for the first time at 11 or trying to make a smoothie in the morning. I actually like can slow down a little bit, which is nice. And I also could probably figure out how to do that when the real world comes back. Aha, there it is. That's the key. Yeah, no. Yeah, because I, I think all of the stress and pressure we create. So if there's some way that we can tap into, man, I was so much more relaxed when, okay, when what? Right. When I wasn't rushing, when I actually provided time for myself, when I have time before my clients to have coffee. Oh, gee, maybe I should just get to the office a little earlier. Right. There's a good idea. <laughs> Well, that's what I do, but it creates stress and pressure on the other end of getting to the office earlier. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I used to say man's greatest in, and worst invention was telling time. I don't know if that's an invention, the clock. Because <laughs> now, <laughs> yep. I mean, you can arrange and organize when to meet people, when to do things, and that's fantastic. But we're so obsessed with how much time does this take? What time yep. is this? You know, how do you do this in a certain amount of time? And that's why I loved going camping and disappearing for a weekend when time didn't matter. You just, you wake up when you wake up, you go to sleep when you're tired and you eat when you're hungry and everything else is in between. They say that if you go camping, I can't remember if it's three days or seven days, could be a month for all I know. But if you go <laughs> camping for however long with zero electronics whatsoever, that your circadian rhythm will reset. Wow. I, I would love to, to test that. When I used to go camping, like I used to disappear for a few days and it was fantastic. Now I'd love to try that out. I just don't want to sleep on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you don't need to sleep on the floor. There's a couple options. I can bring a twin mattress up in the mountains. You can. There's <laughs> one called bringing a twin mattress. The other one is <laughs> glamping. The other one is like middle path glamping where you get like a huge tent and bring a blow up mattress. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, a down comforter. Sure. <laughs> One of my clients just left to go on a houseboat in Vegas for a few days and Oof. she brought a silk pillow and a down comforter. Wow. I'm like, do it right. Yeah. Sure. That's different to me. I mean, that's, that's definitely glamping or getting away for a while. To me, camping, well, maybe it's backpacking versus camping, like going into a mountain, like hiking several miles to get to a spot far away from people and cars and noises. And Why don't you just drive there into the camping spot and then <laughs> go on hikes? You can do that too. When I was going, I would like to be away from all cars and as many people as I could. It was just me and my dog out there. What about bears? No, they didn't come with me. <laughs> We would see uh, evidence of bears. I never actually came face to face with a bear, knock on wood, but you know, I'm sure they were there, but they do their own thing. What do you do by yourself in the woods? Like, do you read and stuff at night? Yeah, you can read. I mean, for me, it was, I was pretty exhausted at night. And at night, 
was probably like <laughs> seven thirty or eight o'clock. Like as soon as it starts getting dark, it gets cold, right? But for me, it was yeah. You you do a lot of like clearing your head. You do a lot of I don't know. You can do some writing. Uh, you can do some reading. It was just being out there, and it's it's funny. Time just passes differently. And I'll tell you that one of the most incredible experiences I had was when I woke up one morning and I had my phone with me. It was off. There was no reception. I just had it to take pictures. And I saw, speaking of time, that it was about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And I took my dog, Franklin. We went down to the a little lake to get some water to, to cook and things. And he played around a little bit. And I thought, oh, I'm kind of tired. Let's take a nap. So I took a nap and I don't nap for more than like five or 10 minutes at a time, but I took a healthy, hearty nap and I woke up and he woke up. I looked at him. He looked at me and just decided to go back to sleep. We did. Took a second nap, full, hearty, healthy nap, right? Woke up and was like, all right, now, man, okay, we definitely got to eat breakfast or something. It's probably like almost lunchtime or something. I don't know, man, this is crazy. And he played around for a minute or two and I like filled up the water and then went, oh, let me just take one more little nap. Fell asleep a third time. Wow. And this is the guy that does not nap. Third nap and another healthy, hearty, full nap. And I woke up, I was like, all right, now we really got to go back because I'm sure we blew past lunchtime. I, I don't know. It might even be dinner time. I don't know what's going on. This day is just flying by. Uh, pick up everything. Look at my phone. It's 10 a.m. It had only been three hours. And you had felt like you took in, taken, took in 10 naps and <laughs> it was evening taken, time. Taken, took in, had, have, having, uh, yeah, three huge naps and thought it was like at least three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Only three hours had passed and it was the most refreshing long sleep I'd have. Sounds nice, actually, to, I'm trying to figure out how I could actually ever do this, just not look at the clock. I guess it would have to be a day that I had no responsibilities. Exactly. And that's for me, it was no responsibility and no one can get a hold of me. That was the biggest thing. And I talk about that with clients sometimes too, like going away somewhere and they'll bring a phone or a laptop. Like, okay, can you disconnect and not be online? Like, no, no, I can't do that. Well, all right. Well, then people are, we can't stop people from texting you, emailing you. You're going to be reachable. Whether you respond or not is up to you, but that's right. where the stress and pressure that we were talking about comes from. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of stress and pressure. <laughs> so much this episode. Dude, this thing started and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, it's funny. He even starts, I mean, I'm not going to give a spoiler away. It's literally the first four words he says. Uh, I mean, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, five words. He goes, it's been a crazy week. So hold on to your hats for the crazy week that Drew's having. We'll be back. Indeed. been a crazy week since i last saw you really yeah kind of shit went down like when i saw you thursday i was doing okay mm -hmm. you know I, I was still emotional i was still going through it but i felt better and right. ended up hooking up with this chick that mm -hmm. also works at fourth place old girlfriend hates hates her and so <laughs> was that part of the reason for the hookup no or the not, reason for it being her not even not okay. even close. I hit her up more on like a reconciliation, just like wanted to grab coffee because like I knew old girlfriend didn't hit me up. So I was like, okay, that's over. Like I need to start mending stuff that I broke through this last year type of mentality. Because you had been friends with this girl before or because yeah. you just left that place? Yeah. No, I, I had been friends with her and then uh, I started dating old girlfriend and she like, don't ever fucking talk to her. Don't, don't do anything. And so I literally just stopped talking to her. Right. And from like uh, my perspective, somebody did that to me. It hurt really bad. And so I was like, oh, fuck, like my bad. And so I, I ended up texting her, just wanted to like, reach out and say sorry. And like, if you want to grab coffee or whatever, like, let me know. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm trying to sleep with you type of thing. It just kind of like ended up that way. And so long story short, we ended up hooking up. And, you know, I woke up the next morning, not upset that I hooked up with her, more so morally upset with myself. Hmm. That I, because like, I don't want to go sleep around with people. You know, like, that's not who I am. That's not what I want to do. I think, I think for me, myself, like I needed that just as like another, like, okay, you're going to be okay. You can get back out there. Totally. It's totally okay. And, and so like Monday came around and everybody was talking about it at the office apparently. And so she found out 
And then she calls me and like, she's like, how, how the fuck could you do this to me? Like, you're just doing this to spite me, like all this stuff. And I'm like, no, like I'm not, you know? And it's crazy that it took this for you to text me. You know, you were supposed to hit me up last week and you were supposed to get coffee and like all this stuff. And it's going to take me moving on for you to now show me you care. Like that, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I talked to her on the phone for like two hours. And Wow. Yeah. How was that? Just that conversation. Because it seems like it was a little contentious. How could you do this? Well, how could you do that? Talked in circles for a lot of it. Yeah. I just got done working out and I was pretty stoned. And, you know, I texted her. I was like, I don't want to talk to you right now. I'm high. Like, I don't, this is not the right time for me to have this conversation. But out of respect for that, I'd like you to wait till tomorrow. And she and two hours later. Well, yeah. And then she was like, you either call me right now or I'm never talking to you again. And so me being me. Holy shit. Time out. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah. It, You've heard that before. Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty common for people to say that and for us to hear that. Right. But that's a trigger point for you. Absolutely. You know, and that instant feeling of loss and, and oh, she's actually like leaving, leaving, never talking to her again. Like, that was a scary thought. So I was yeah. like, fuck. Okay. So I called her. It was a pretty heated conversation. It wasn't an argument by any means, but it was, it was a heated conversation for the first like hour. And then we kind of, I don't know if it was like an emotional exhaustion point, but we both just kind of like calmed down and like talked normally for like 30 minutes, hmm. which really fucked me up because it was like, how can we talk normally but hate each other type of thing? Like, I, I don't right. I don't get that. I, I got to go to bed. Like, you know, we'll talk soon. And, and I just need some time now, like on my end now, because I'm trying to figure out everything that kind of happened and why she's reacting like this and, and not trying to talk to her because I don't, I don't want to anymore. You know, like, yeah. I just don't want any of this anymore. And so I'm going to bed. Like, I love you. I hope you're okay. Like, if you ever need me in the future, like, call me. You know, I'm here. But I'm not. Like, I need some time. I'm going to put a pin in that sentiment. Yep. I'm going to come back to that sentiment. Okay. Keep going. Okay. And so we hung up. And not two minutes later, she texted me in just absolute, like, fury of, like, fuck you. I can't believe you do this. Complete 180 from the conversation we left on. And then the next day, she texted me. And I was like, I don't think we should. Like, I need some time. And then she sent me, it was one of those texts that was so long that you can't, like, she had to send it as, like, an email. Broke it up in, like, a... It was, like, an attachment that I had to open. Right. She basically told me about her last relationship and how she was on and off for seven years and, like, he cheated on her and she would, like, find other girls, like, underwear in his house and and all that kind of stuff. And she was, like, you're doing exactly the same thing. Like, you represented everything that was, like, good and pure in my life and now you're just, you're completely the same as this guy. And I didn't text her back. I haven't talked to her since because I was like, I'm not like that. You know, and how dare you fucking come at me like that to try and hurt me in this. Yeah. So I think that's all it is. She's just trying to like hurt. If we had that conversation six months ago and we broke up, this would be a completely different conversation. I had no idea what she's been through. Right? And and that really made me realize through the whole like last year, like, I don't know anything about her. I don't know anything about this girl. Wow. So it, it's just kind of a trip of like, yeah, I still miss her. And yeah, I still love her. And I was going to say, but. Nice catch. I saw your I was mouth say, but. To say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I want nothing to do with it. That's huge. Yeah. And that right now might be part protective mechanism. Mm-hmm. It might be actually where you want to wind up. Fine. Mm-hmm. But let me, let me be cliche therapist just for a mm-hmm. moment here. Because mm-hmm. that, I mean, it wasn't just that one conversation. It was the one that came after that the next day. It was the text exchange. How does all that make you feel? I don't know. I, I've been thinking about it a lot the last like 48 hours. So I was like, I don't want to text her back. You know, I want to go to church. I want to hear what the sermon is. I want to come talk to you, see how that feels, see how I feel after all of this. And like, well, how does it feel? You're telling me. Yeah, yeah, thinking. yeah. I want to know what you were feeling. Something happened to you on that first phone call. Something happened to you to yeah. get on that first phone call. Right. And then the second one, the complete 180. Mm-hmm. Right. And then yeah, I mean, yeah. there was something happening. I think the first phone call her reaching out to me. I mean, like she had friends text me, like her friends text me how much of an asshole I was and all this shit, but her actually reaching out, that helped me have closure because Mm -hmm. I thought when she hit me up, I'd come up with all these emotions of like, oh, I want you back so bad. Oh, I can't believe like it's been two weeks and I haven't talked to you. Like, oh my God, I missed you. Mm -hmm. And it was almost the opposite of that of like, okay, you're you're calling me because of the situation, not because you actually want to talk to me. And Mm -hmm. I really, like that clicked for me of you're just hurt, not you actually want to talk. Mm. Yeah, it's like something you said about, am I in love with her or the idea of her, right? Right. right. Is she wanting to connect with me or is it the idea of having been hurt by me? Right. But the last half hour of that call, you said 
was in between. Calm. You right. know, and, and that kind of brought me back to the same conversation that I had with my ex ex girlfriend a week ago. You know, mm-hmm. when we talked mm-hmm. for a while, you know, it wasn't like I had any feelings for her. I, in the sense of like, I want to get in a relationship. Like, I love you. Like, we're meant to be together. It was kind of that same thing where it was like, okay, I can have a conversation with you. Like, I can, I can still be nice to you. You know, I still want to be friends, but it's not. Like, I don't want you back in my life emotionally, like yeah. at all, like at all. Yeah, and I, I hear you saying, I can have conversations like that. I can do that. I, mm-hmm. you know. Part of when you when you first said, yeah, the last half hour of the conversation, it really fucked me up. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll flip that script. Yeah. Go, no, it didn't fuck you up. It actually highlighted for you mm-hmm. when I can talk to somebody with this level of vulnerability, which is important to you. Right. That's reciprocated. Right. Right. That feels great. Yeah. Like the one I had with my ex ex a while ago. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. It's not about I want to get something out of it. It's about this is how I want to relate with somebody, period. Right. And it's I. I can do this. Mm-hmm. And we just have to to kind of tune ourselves for yeah. can they do this or not? And if what you're slowly learning now or abruptly learning now <laughs> about her is she had some experiences where she's still suffering from that. She's still processing from that. Mm-hmm. And she's carrying that. And it comes out with you. That's a level of vulnerability you want in the beginning. Right. Right. Or you want along the way. Right. Just at some point. Yeah. Even a glimpse of it would have been nice. Right. And it, it's just shocking that, like, all of this is coming out after the fact. What was the reason you couldn't tell me that a year ago? Was that you or her? Her. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't I don't think I need to know those answers because, like, I care, but I just don't. Like, it doesn't bother me. It's not either way. It's just kind of like, okay. It's not going to change it. Right. I'm coming back to where I put the pin. Yep. Because there's something that happened to you that I want us to kind of dig into a little bit if we can. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is how you described it, why I jumped in and put a pin in there, mm-hmm. was back to what we talked about, obligation, not choice. Mm-hmm. Back to, I now have a responsibility. Yeah. Because she put it on me in that shocking way that mm-hmm. my brother did, you know, that probably others have done for you. Right. If you don't call me back, I'm never going to speak to you again. Yeah. It created something in you that was almost mm-hmm. 100% obligation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's... My integrity and how I want to be, I can't, I can't risk, can't risk mom dying, can't risk brother leaving, can't risk any of those things, can't risk that happening. So let me step up. Let me put how I feel and what I want to do and my choice on hold or ignore it while I go do this thing that I'm supposed to do to be a good person. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yeah, I I think you're exactly right. And I think uh, looking back on our conversation, I did a lot of, I don't want to say mending, but I definitely said sorry, you know, which I don't, like, I'm not sorry for what I did, like, at all. You know, it, it had nothing to do with her. My mentality wasn't a, haha, this is going to make you so mad. But nothing, it had nothing to do with her. And so it's like, I'm not sorry for what I did. I'm sorry that she hurts the way she does. Yes. But I'm not, like, it's not my fault. Yes. And, like, yeah, that's Say hurt. that again. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly. Say that again. To me. Like, what I did had nothing to do with her. And, and like the way she's feeling, it's, all, it's her response. It has nothing, it has nothing to do with me, yeah. you know? And I think a lot of it too, now knowing her past relationship, it's all, it, she's bringing that emotion into this. Right. And like, that's just not fair for me. And it's not fair that she's going to walk out of my life and then come back like this. Do I deserve this? Not at all. Is it, it my fault? No. Not Did like, I attract this? Did I bring this in? Not at all. And it wasn't malicious. You know, my heart was like in a good spot in the sense right. of like, like last week I was, I was really just trying to figure out where I fit in. You know, I was going to museums, going to libraries, like having lunch with people. You know, I was at the gym every day. You know, I was, I was trying to see what my day looks like now that like it's my day. Now that it's my day and I don't have an obligation somewhere else. If I had a choice, fine. Yeah. There's a shift that happened where we go into that obligation place. Mm-hmm. That place of taking care and making sure everybody's okay, yeah. which is something that drives you. We've talked about this. That's why you almost booked a helicopter to get back from Vegas. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. It's like, let me take care of everybody else. Right. Well, let's take care of you. Yeah. I mean, that's the exact feeling I've been feeling for the last probably week or so, you know, mm. of like, okay, this actually feels really good now. Right. You know, it, it's still shitty. Like, it's still shitty, but it feels really good, you know, and, and I can see all the progress just in my own life that these last two, three weeks of like brought, right. which has been really, really cool. So it's really freeing in the sense of like, 
is allowing me to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. Which is exact like this is exactly what I needed. Totally. You know, in, in every aspect of my life, like this is what I needed. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this a while ago too, in terms of that clean slate. Mm-hmm. And it's freeing you up. So you can look for more choice yeah. and less obligation. You can be aware of when it feels like obligation. And remember too that a big piece of this is, you know, that pendulum, mm-hmm. right? Swinging back and forth. I was pinned to that obligation side for a while. Right. So I let go of that and, well, look at that. I'm staying up all night, drinking, fucking around with some girl. Yeah. Okay. It's going to swing back and we will find center. Yeah. You know, being kind to yourself, forgiving and compassionate. It's it's just recognizing, okay, I don't have to look at that as, you know, as you said, I, I felt almost morally corrupt the next day. Right. You know? Yeah. Had to, had to go go to get to church quick. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, it's that idea of, oh, right. I'm just broken out. And I have this freedom and I need to experience it and I need to calibrate that so the pendulum will come closer to center, right? Yeah, because like, I know I don't want to go out and party and do blow and fuck girls. And, like, part of me, of course, does. You know, I'm 24 and, like, you know, like, like, <laughs> right. like of course, there's part of me that does. But, sure. like, like the majority is, like, helping me really... It, it's getting me more motivated than anything mm. to get back into what I want to do. So I think I lost that this last year. Mm. I think I've gone through these last two and a half weeks really well. I mean, it was shit and I was really upset and like I cried a lot and I was super emotional. But I was talking to my dad about it the other day and like this is the first like big event in my life that I've been able to be emotional through and and not feel like I needed to have a vice to like cope with it. You know, I've been coping with myself and like relying on myself to like get out of bed, go take a shower, go to the office, drive around, go fuck around, go go do what I need to do. Right. Um, Right. Whereas like before, like I would go to drugs and alcohol and and like it, like just seeing it and living through it this time is completely different. And I think I said that last time too. Of like, this is the first like big event I've really gone through. You phrased it as that I've gone through and allowed myself to feel and allowed myself to process. Right. You've gone through a lot of events, but you haven't actually gone through them. Yeah. You've just kind of gone yeah. around or over. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. This is this is yeah. Bring it on. I I can I can handle this because I've got some support. I yeah. can process. I've got some insight. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And and I think that's another thing I'm realizing through this is like my solid people in my life and who I really care about and like who really wants me to win and not, not because I have something to offer them. Mm. Because like I, like these last two weeks, I had nothing to offer anybody other than I need help. And it was nice to like be taken care of like that without having to give something back. You know, like my mom came down the next day. It was yeah. like, yeah, I'll be there. Like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll hang out. We'll kick it. We can just eat and talk and you'll be fine. Yeah. Th- there's something about asking for what it is you need. Yeah. You know, and people are willing to give it, especially when you have good people around you. You come from a place of, I want to have something to offer people. Mm-hmm. Right. But not offer them, you know, something in terms of monetary gain or here are these new shoes or try to yeah. just, you know, who I am and how I am. Right. I offer my authenticity. I offer this. And there's, there's a gravity that attracts like, right? Like attracts like in that sense. Right. And you get those people around you. And those are the people that don't care who you are, how much money you have or what you do. I care if you're going to be there for me when I need something and say that. Yeah. It's not necessarily like, I mean, you're going to hit this soon. Like, oh, I got to move. Yeah. Can you help me move? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, that's the old cliche. Like you find out who your friends are when you have to move, right? <laughs> well, it's funny you bring that up because I was talking to uh, my best friend yesterday. I'm still hurt. You know, I'm still not over all of this. And so I, I call him like every day and we just kind of like chit chat and talk. And like yesterday I was like, dude, like I got to move next, like in the next couple of weeks. Like I'm not looking forward to it. He's like, dude, let me know. Like when you need help, I'll be there. I didn't even ask him. Right. You know, and like just stuff like that. I mean, it's hard because he's so far away and like all of like my entire support group that I have is sure. so far away. Yeah. But it, it's really nice to jump on a call and just be able to like talk. Because I know I have my support and I know I can do what I need to do and not have to worry about the two interfering with each other, which is another thing I realized like in this last relationship is like, she didn't support me in anything on a career level. Yeah. She said she was proud of me here and there and like, but it was never like, I'm proud of your soul. I'm proud of your heart. Like, I love you. It was always kind of like, what are you going to buy me next? Where are we going to go next? That kind of thing, which I don't think that's where her heart is. It's just what she showed me. It's pretty good insight, especially because now she's telling you some of where her heart has been. Right. 
and what created the heart that you got to be with. Mm -hmm. And this old nugget that I have is it explains it, doesn't excuse it. Right. Right. Yeah. It might explain why you were a certain way with me, but it doesn't excuse that that's how you were with me. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I think that's exactly it. You know, like it's given me the closure to understand that like she's been through some shit that sucks. And I wish I, she could have told me and we could have gone through it together. Right. But like, it is what it is. You know, and like, I'm not stressing about that at all. You know, like, that's her choice. And like, she made that decision. I can be there every day. Just tell me, like, uh, that doesn't help anybody, you right. know, because then I'm not getting my, what I need in the sense of like being vulnerable. And then she puts, wall, you know, it's just like a. But, right. And you just, you were just about to say, she puts wall up. Right? Yeah. Then we put those walls up. Then we're not saying what we need. Right. Because we have those walls. We have, you know, bad communication. There isn't vulnerability or transparency. Then I'm going to go get my need met somewhere else. Right. But going out and doing this thing, it's feeding something for her right. that she wasn't able to tap into for herself and then share with you like, hey, I really like this. or This is something that I need or value in a relationship. We didn't get that. Right. You know, and even in, who knows, not her therapist. We're not yeah. analyzing yeah. her, but that idea that I've been cheated on before. So I want to go out there and keep one foot out in the game. And she said that to me a couple of months ago. Mm. I, I've been thinking about that too. She was like, you know, if we ever break up, like I don't want to lose all my friends. And I was like, why is that your mentality? Like your mentality should be like certain, like, okay, I got my, I got my man. I'm still going to keep my friends though. Not a, oh, you might walk out one day. Right. I got to keep my other life going. Right. And like, I knew, like I, I heard that. I knew it right then and there that that was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. And we can pull from our frame of reference for mm -hmm. this. Cause I remember you telling me that you had an ex that cheated on you with your best friend. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've been there to a degree. Yeah. I right? get it. I understand what she's going through. And I, I knew when like Monday when we broke up, like when she said, I just can't be with you right now. I love you. I, I've said that to somebody. I know that feeling. I get where you're at. But fuck you for not helping me through it. Because, like, fuck that. That's not where I am, and that's not what I need. Mm -hmm. I, I get that that's what you need and where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll respect that. And I have needs, too. Right. And I like how you don't drop everything for her. Mm -hmm. You did to call her back. Right. Because that triggered something else. Yeah. Well, she called me like eight times and then she texts me like 20 times. And and, sure. and what I hear when yeah. people tell me that is, oh man, that, that other person is so anxious right now. Yeah. And they are so triggered and activated and freaking out. Yeah. And there's an old joke. I don't know if I told you this one, the old social worker joke. Mm -hmm. These two social workers are crossing the street mm -hmm. and they see this girl that looks like she's been battered and beat, like dumped in the curb. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, they look at her and one social worker says to the other, Wow, the guy that did that to her really needs our help. Damn. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, she needs help too, but yeah. Everybody initially would go to that. Yeah. And the social workers are like, oh, what, what created this? Yeah. You know, where did this come from? Right. You know, and that's often ignored. Right. You know, we could paint old girlfriend as the bad guy in mm -hmm. this right now. We could yeah. pretty easily. Yeah. And at times, I've told, I told you this a week or two ago, like, yeah. you will. And right. you will be very angry. Right. Okay. Let, yeah. that, let that come. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. That's a part of it for sure. Right? Yeah. But she's been through her own stuff. Right. And again, it explains it, doesn't mm. excuse it, because there was still an impact on you. Right. And the tone that you guys have taken over the last three, four, if not more weeks, isn't let's bring that out with this vulnerability, deepen our intimacy, figure this out, and move forward together. It's we're in different places. Yeah. Yeah. And like the whole, the whole anger thing, I think I've felt that to a degree, mm. you know, I'm not a very angry person in general, mm -hmm. just generally speaking. Why not? Is it, is it an effort to not be angry? No, I think at the end of the day, like for me, anger doesn't get me anywhere. Like it never has. And it, I don't think it ever will. And so when I get angry, I kind of look for like, why am I angry? Mm. And then kind of pick from that. I don't stay there. I always try and, okay, I'm mad, but why? Even in the moment when it, when it spikes it, wow. Not in my anxiety, not in like that other kind of shit, because my, I think all of that is more fear based and like I'm scared. And I think I have a lot of power when I'm angry. Sure. And, and so when I'm in that state, I'm very, I'm very rational. You know, I'm very uh, calm. Interesting. You're almost describing, I have a sense of choice. Right. 
when for a lot of people, when they get angry, choice is gone yeah. and they're just on autopilot to do something. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, one of my big keys for, for anger is anger is a secondary emotion. Right. There's almost always something else behind it. And anger is just easier to express. Right. I can throw a phone across the room. I can kick the car door. You know, I can punch a wall. Mm-hmm. My clients break their fucking hands yeah. punching a wall because yeah. they got angry. Yeah. Right. And it's okay. Well, what's behind it? Right. And it might be often it's I'm really disappointed or I'm really hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be confused, frustrated. I mean, there are tons of things. Right. It could be a lot of things. Right. Anger is just so much easier to express. It's it's hard as hell especially in a relationship to go, wow, I'm just feeling so jealous mm. and, you know, or I feel so left out and betrayed and lonely. No, it comes out in anger because that's the easier thing to express. Yeah. For you, I think you feel that anger come up and go, whoa, what is this feeling? Right. What's going on here? Yeah. This isn't what I want to do, mm-hmm. which is great. That you have that mechanism of insight. That's exactly how I was with old girlfriend. You know, I, I mm. would get upset and I'd be like, this is what's going on. This is why I'm upset. I'm not mad. I'm not angry with you but these are the feelings I'm feeling. Yeah. And that was really good for me, but that made her shut down. That's what we were just talking about a second ago. Yeah. And like you said early on, like I'm the emotional one. Mm-hmm. Well, you just are emotional. You're right. in touch with your emotions. Yeah. You know, you've had a lot of them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, my bias is I hear you in here and we're talking about emotions a lot. Yeah. So I'd say you're very good at expressing them right. and being vulnerable. Yeah. Day one, you were saying vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And that, that's something that from the get-go with how you talked about old girlfriend, I approach her with vulnerability. Right. I don't get that bad. I see guard. I see those, like I said, those walls. That's why I jumped in because mm-hmm. you're making that wall gesture. I'm like, right. Yeah. Now we're walled. Now we're defended. Yeah. Now we're not going to get anywhere. And right. usually the way to break down a wall is with anger. Yeah. Right. But that's not, that's not your scene. Mm-hmm. No. And like, I'm okay with it being like this. I mean, like, I'm kind of sad, but like, I'm Okay. You know, I'm not sad because of her. I'm just sad because I'm alone now. Because I've never been alone. I've never lived by myself. And now I'm out here by myself. And like, it's just, it gets cool. It's empowering. And and it makes me kind of look back and feel uh, a lot of courage and all that. Hmm. Because nobody else is doing this for me. Like nobody, I've had help along, a lot of help along the way. At the end of the day, like I've done all this. You know, and like, I think that's cool. I think that's very cool. Yeah. And it doesn't mean I won't need help along right. the way, or that asking for help is weak. Mm-hmm. It's often a sign of strength to recognize where you need or can use some help or support. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like we were talking about that in church last night. The example he put was imagine you're shopping with your like your five buddies in the mall and you get triggered and then all of a sudden you're really anxious. And he was like, imagine if you, the, the person he's talking about, his last like experience with his ex-girlfriend was at the mall. And then he gets triggered and he thinks about that. And then he's in a bundle of emotion because he doesn't feel like he can't like talk about it. Right. And he's like, let's get to a community where you can just like pull your friend aside and be, Hey man, I'm triggered. I have a lot of anxiety right now. I don't know what's going on, but I need yeah. help. Yeah. And you just be there with each other. You don't have to do anything. You don't talk about it. Just sit. Yeah. You know? And like, that was really cool. Cause it's like, I have that. So like, it, it was really nice just to find more of a community. Cause like, it's a completely different lifestyle that they live. Hmm. And for us to be able to connect on, like, a, a heart-to-heart level. So, I mean, they come from a background of something that, like, I know about, but I've never experienced and I've never seen. And I don't, I get it, but I don't understand it. Hmm. And I come from, I don't want to say the opposite, because I've seen my fair shit, but different. You have seen your fair share of shit. And, and some of your closer friends have had a lifestyle that you don't agree with. Right. And they're still there for you. And your sense of integrity and morality is working for you. Yeah. And it's okay. Choices that you're able to make. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah, 24, you still might make some dumb ones. Right. You know, I've made a couple. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm, I have a couple coming, you know, I, I, I know they're coming. It's right. just when now that we're talking about this too, like, like yesterday at my buddy's house, he was like, yo, you want to do a line? Like, you, do you want anything? And I was like, no, nah, man, like, I'm cool. Like, I go to church tonight. Like I'm fine. You know? So it wasn't like, like morally, it felt good to like be like, no, nah, I'm cool. And he's like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah, like I'm fine. He's like, man, mad respect. Like I'll fuck with that. And so like it was cool, like that flip of like feeling like I had to to fit in, right? To now standing on my own two feet of being okay with what I want to do. Yeah, and being okay with who and how you are. 
right? Yeah, yeah. And like that was another thing too with this relationship. I felt like I lost a lot of what I stood for, like a lot of it, you know. So it's getting me back on my feet and figuring out what's right and what's wrong and, and where do I fit it in in between. And yeah, I'll give you one more story. It I love to this. Yeah. <laughs> There's this girl that I liked, and we would hike with our dogs, my old dog, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. And even if my dog was gassed or it was too hot, her dog had a lot of energy and she'd want to go certain trails and I would go along. Right. I would just do it. My dog would look at me and I'd look at him and be like, okay, we're doing it. Yeah. Right. And something clicked at some point when we realized like we weren't going to be together, we weren't going to date or whatever it was, Mm -hmm. but we still would hike with our dogs all the time, still be friends. But the shift in me was her going, all right, I want to go up this trail. And I'd say, all right, we're, we're going to cut this way and go around there and just do a shorter loop today. Yeah. You know, and I started making my own choices. And the funny thing in this, man, <laughs> was she started going, okay, well, we'll go with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I probably became more attractive when I was making my own decisions, making my own choices and doing my own thing. It's being more well-rounded instead of giving ourselves up, losing our identity and going along with somebody else. Right? Yeah, definitely. And I think I'm trying to try to figure out my shorter trails right now. Totally. And see what trails I want to go on. Yeah. I mean, there's so many routes to take, man. Yeah, infinite. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. But, and it's good. You know, I, I, I'm in a decent spot comparatively to two weeks ago. Totally. You know, I feel, and I feel much better. Look, you'll cycle through a little bit too, you know. You're, you're going to hit the angry one. Mm-hmm. You're going to hit the, the sad one. And I think what I like in terms of calling it like the acceptance phase, not, mm-hmm. not that you graduate and finish, yeah. right? <laughs> but it's really accepting where you are. Where you are right now is, yeah, I want to check out all these different trails. I want to see which way I can go. Yeah. You know, I got a lot right now in my life that I'm carving out that's new. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm going to take me out for a spin. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I think uh, when we talked about it a a week or two ago, the acceptance phase, I thought was me accepting her leaving. Mm. And now I'm seeing it as I'm accepting me being okay. And yeah. I like that shift too, because like again, like I'm taking power out of her hands. Yes, and putting it back in mine. Hundred percent, man. And like, it feels so much better. Yeah, it feels so much better because it's where your heart is, where your intention is, where your integrity is. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's that. Yeah, this is the trail I want to go. This is what I'm choosing. This is this is true to me. Yeah. And that almost always feels better because we give up so much of that we don't even realize we are to go walk that trail with her because she's that that way. Right. Or to go follow that trail because it leads to riches or fame, forge success, wh- whatever it might be. Yeah. And you, you threw something at me early on that I'll throw back at you. Yeah. You go back to Canada and go fish for a living and be fine. Right? Yeah. So it's, all right, but I'm here now. Let me see what I want to do. Right. Enjoy while I got it. Absolutely. That's all I can do. Cool. Yeah. Dude, yeah. You, Love you are in a much better place, man. It, yeah. It, it sounds good to hear it. Yeah. And we are back. with you once again. Here we are <laughs> once again. Here we are. Okay. So crazy week. Apparently. Had sex with a new girl, different girl, not his ex. Correct. Well, I don't know if they had sex. They hooked up. Hooked up with that, with that age group means had sex. And then also he said later he felt when he was talking about, he felt morally corrupt or whatever. He said, I don't want to just be sleeping around. Yeah. Okay. May or may not. Well, but. I guess you know better, but it's a whole different world if you didn't have sex. That makes a big difference. What do you mean? Does it? Really? Yeah. Why? If a my ex like hooked up with another girl quickly after we broke up and they just like made out or if they had sex, it would be different. Right. But that's your story. What about the story that it would be for your ex? Because you in this situation are putting yourself in the shoes of the ex-girlfriend. He would definitely think it was different he'd be like what do you mean i didn't have sex with her (laughs) just like that in that voice (laughs) right that's why he's an ex (laughs) yep um but yes (laughs) anyway so there was that part where he said he started reaching out to her because he had been a shitty friend kind of when he started dating his ex right and then whoops so yeah he did say He woke up not feeling bad that he hooked up with her, like that she was lying in bed with him, but morally upset about 
because he doesn't want to sleep around is what he said. And I can respect that. Yeah. And even his intention in connecting with this girl was not trying to sleep with her. It was right. trying to make amends for what he realized was not something that's his integrity and how he wants to be, which is I had to cut her off. I had to not be friends with her. Right. Totally. Yeah. Which is common. That happens a lot. And it's it's a bummer when two people start going out that the periphery friends have to kind of fade away because the partner isn't comfortable with it. Yeah. And I get that. I mean, I do. I am friends with a lot of my exes and I respect the fact that when, I know it's different because it's an ex, but when they are in a relationship or I have a few specific exes that whenever they're in a relationship, they're like, oh, can't talk to you. And I'm like, no worries, you'll break up. And then they break up. And <laughs> and I feel like once right. somebody gets married, it's a little different. Like usually their spouse is a little more comfortable, but it definitely changes the dynamic. I think it's also when you have a long-term partner, you get married, it's not as common to be like, oh, honey, I'm going to go out with Joe now and we're going to go you know, out to dinner, but you stay home. Right. It's more like usually, and again, this is stereotypical, but the same sex, like, oh, my husband's going to go out with the boys and I'm going to go out with the girls. And yes, sorry, gender specific. I know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's a little, it can be uncomfortable. I think things change a little bit, but when you do it because you're scared of what they may say, or because they're super jealous and pissed as opposed to being or like, you're a, not allowed. Yeah. Well, when you're told you're not allowed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I loved the whole way that the conversation with them, with him and his ex went down. Mm. First of all, he said, everyone was talking about it at the office. I was like, are you guys fucking 12? And also how did they find out so quickly? Well, it, isn't it ironic that they find out about the breakup so quickly yet they were keeping their relationship a secret the whole time they were there? Oh, I thought he was talking. They were saying everyone found out that he hooked up with that other girl. Yeah, that's that's probably true. I think that's more true. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And then I got a little confused because first he talked about the the phone call for two hours, but then he went backwards and said how he navigated that originally, which was him saying that he was super stoned. Right. Like, babe, I'm stoned right now and I just worked out. Let's talk about it tomorrow. Yeah, that's your voice now, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> and and so he was trying to be effective. He wasn't he didn't think it would be good. He wanted to talk to her tomorrow. And she pulled out the if you don't talk to me now, you're never we're never talking again. Yep. Yep. Which again, you were like, I don't think it even occurred to him that that was what his brother said and right. how how fearful he became and right away called her. Probably everybody listening, because it's not just me as the therapist in the room with him. You as the therapist listening and all of you listeners out there probably went, oh, I've heard that before for him. Totally. Yeah. And also shut the fuck up, ex-girlfriend. Like <laughs> you are going to talk to him again. That's not true. And if you had any awareness, you would know that that is what his brother said. And so stop being a bitch, but also no judgment. I totally get it. You probably didn't think about any of that. And it probably came out because you were upset and you have a right to be upset. As far as I'm concerned that your ex who you just broke up with hooked up with your friend. Yeah. And look, I, I think for, for Drew and this girl, they're not necessarily poised to get back together. I won't tell you whether or not they do. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think that was a possibility. Everything's a possibility. I know, but I didn't think about it. Great. Right. So anyway, then he said that he did call her, of course, because he freaked out. And then they talked for a couple hours, went in circles. And the last half hour of the conversation, he felt like it was sort of comfortable and calm again. And then that fucking tripped him out. But then he realized, nope, you're a bitch still. Yeah. And very, very telling that what he kind of recognized was it took this for her to open up. Like, this is what I've been waiting for the whole relationship. Yep. And why, why I kind of said, look, you know, whether or not they get back together, this might be for her an experience where she'll go, wow. So when I did finally open up, we had a really co good conversation. It was just too late. Right. Maybe I should do this earlier in a relationship and be more vulnerable and take more chances that way. Right. And he said, you know, it made me realize I didn't know anything about her. I'd say to you, Drew, I don't know that that is true. I'm sure you did, but you didn't know a lot about her 
and maybe she wasn't being vulnerable with you. That doesn't mean you don't know her. It just means you don't know certain sides of her, potentially. Right. What he was saying, what he was trying to get at was if we had this conversation six months ago, it would have been a, a different story. And the story, I think, is these are the conversations and the way of interacting with somebody that he really responds well to, that he's really looking for. So that's what he wants. And I highlight that part of it. Uh-huh. And whether or not girlfriend, ex-girlfriend gets there is secondary. And I'll give Drew a lot of credit for not going, wow, she is capable of this. Maybe I did make a mistake. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. We had this two hour conversation and she was everything that I wanted and, and talked to me the way I want to be talked. So, so I'm going to get back together with her, which, you know, I think that to not have that initially hit yeah. and go, oh crap, I made a mistake. She is this way. He even said that he realized that that she was calling because she's hurt, not because she right. necessarily wanted to connect with him. And that he was surprised at himself because he didn't feel like he wanted to get back together with her during that conversation. Right. And that he said he was sorry, not for what he did, but he was sorry that she felt shitty. And then you guys talked about that's her problem. Right. You know, even as I was saying earlier with, with you and me in this, that her journey, whether or not she grows and she heals and sees, oh, wow, maybe I can take these chances and, and be vulnerable earlier in a relationship. That's her journey. Has nothing to do with him. His role is not to help her with her journey. Exactly. Not now. Like if you're together, you're married, like, yeah, of course, you're going to be on a journey together and you guys can do it together, but you don't have to be the one helping. Right. And there was a point, which I, of course, wrote down and I wrote, but dot, 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 and exclamation point, yay. Because (laughs) when he started to say but, and he said, and you were like, look at that. Yeah, love that. That was a good one. Some of the stuff that we're talking about now, uh, a few comments that we've gotten from listeners were, man, how did you find somebody so insightful? I know. know, What's wrong with me? I'm not as, as emotionally insightful as Drew is. Like, how does that happen? I've found like, that grows in a lot of my clients. And part of it is the style of work that we do, you know, and how I do it with them is to walk through their regular life with them and point things out that they might not be thinking of a certain way. And now it comes to their attention in that way. And they go, oh man, yeah, I am working on this. This is cool. So they're able to have more insight in real time. Yeah. And I agree. I think if you listen from the very beginning, if you went back, you would see the growth and the the growth of the insight as you guys progress. Also, he is, at least in some ways, he is this insightful human. And he, and he mm. did get to this point in life where he was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to sit in here. I'm going to come every week yep. and I'm going to do this. Right. So it wasn't just like a meh. It was like, I kind of know what I want to work on. I'm going into therapy. I'm going to do the work. I'm listening. I'm working on it during the week when I'm not there. So it was a big commitment on his part. Exactly. So the other thing is, then, he, you know, he started talking about he spent the week or the last week or a couple of weeks, I can't remember what he said, but trying to figure out where he fit in Mm. friends, going to museums, gym, just the, the having no obligations. And one of the things that really stood out for me was he said, the last couple of weeks, I've had nothing to offer people but people were there. Right. And my thought, Drew, is that you always have something to offer people, but it's like you've said, a choice, not an obligation. And what you have to offer is just yourself not having to be on, I'm doing air quotes, or not having to be the guy that's always there for everybody, but just being you is something to offer. Absolutely. That's something we talked about early on when he was telling me about that he connects more with people just based on who he is. He can't relate to the people that have gobs of money and, you know, the billionaire fashion people or millionaire fashion people who take private planes and do this and that, five cars. What he did relate to or what they related to in him was that authenticity. Exactly. That is something refreshing, especially when you're in circles like that or pretty much anywhere. You don't have to be a celebrity or a mogul or have status to be that way. It's hard to fit in with people. And I think what I was saying was like attracts like when you're putting out authenticity, authentic people are attracted to that. And now your circle of friends are more authentic people, people that are concerned with the trend or how they look or what this is or what they have. If that's your circle, that's what you're attracting. That's what's going to be around you. 
Yes. And I also, you know, me always with the judgment, there's nothing wrong with being the person that likes planes or how you look or clothes, because that can be one side of you, right? Like oh, right, you want right. to give me a private plane, I'll fucking take it. Right. That doesn't mean I'm not still <laughs> humble and you know what I mean? Totally. And authentic, right? Yeah, exactly. So I do think people with a lot of money and famous or so whatever get a bad rap sometimes. And it, it's something he said early too, when he was like, I'm trying to go out to like $500 dinners on, you know, a hundred dollar a week food budget. You know, it's, it's tough. And it was, yep. he was, yep. was still is in a world where it's fashion. It's how you look. It's what you're doing. It is being seen. It is being in the trends and, and being up on stuff. Yeah. And he, he loves going to like thrift shops and vintage shopping and, and looking at cool stuff and getting inspiration that way. Not like, you know, where can I drop a ton of money, you know, whether it's mine or the company's and really stay in this. It's how do I bring my flavor to it? And that was a thing is, and he brought it up and I don't think he's ever really said just this before, but he's alluded to it, but he said, she didn't support me. And mm. it was always just like, what are you going to buy me? Where are we going to go? Right. And I was like, what, Drew? That sucks. Yeah. And I think more than anything, what he's really strengthening right now is his sense of true self. You know, when he was like plugging back into his faith, church, museums, his friends, like going, right, this is the stuff I actually like around me. This is what feels good. And the more he does that, the more authentic he's going to be and the better it's going to feel. Totally. And I think later on, I know I'm going out of order, which really throws me off. But later on, you shared a story <laughs> about, you shared the dog story, the hike with the girl and the hiking. Oh, yeah. and yep how you always exhausted Franklin. And finally you were like, I'm going to go this way. And she was like, okay, <laughs> I'll go with you. Right. So true, man. So true. Whether you call it losing yourself or compromising too much, or, you know, I think initially <laughs> I have a client right now was like, dude, I told this chick I'd go hiking with her and I really don't want to go. He's like, <laughs> I told her that I love hiking and I fucking hate mm, hiking. And mm. I'm like, why? He's like, I don't know. And then he did hot. the same thing. <laughs> he did the same thing with a different girl with yoga. I was dying. I, he's like, why did I tell her I would go? Why did I tell her I would do it? And I'm like, because you're trying to make a good impression and click, you know, and that's okay. Totally. I have clients that actually think about, oh man, I shouldn't have said this. I should have been more like this, like more like that or more like yourself. No, more like that, because that is going to be what gets the girl. It's like, okay, let's yep. follow that. Yep. What happens when you get the girl? Uh, right. right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, such a clear example for me that he totally got, you know, because it really was, oh, right. I'll, I'll just keep quiet and walk whatever trail this girl wants to walk. No problem. Yeah. But as soon as like you feel your own strength and go, wait, I'm going to walk my trail. Then you just start doing it. Yeah. But in the beginning, it makes sense. You want to, you walk the trail with her because there's, there's compromise, but totally. to not be able to say to her, you know what? My dog's real tired. Like, so, right. you know, that's where I think it's important to, to kick in. We all try to put our best foot forward, but it's to like what extent I think Drew put up with a lot of her shit. And the cool thing is that he said he was able to have compassion for her. You know, he right. said like, this is her shit. And then you told that amazing, you said it was a joke, but I don't know that it was a joke about the girl being beat up. And then the, uh, <laughs> the, the social, social worker, worker being yeah. like, yep. yeah, I was like, is that a joke? It's just insightful as fuck. Like it was great. Right. I love that. I never heard that. And that is so often how I look at things. And I think, you know, a lot of times it's important to find that middle path of balance. Like, no, I am not in any way saying that it's okay that that guy beat her up and poor guy. And at the same time, it's important to try and find some compassion for the guy. Yeah. It's not okay that he did it at all. I, I would say that whatever happened that doesn't excuse the behavior. It's not okay. It explains the behavior. And when we have the explanation, we can get in there and tweak it and look at that and work on that. That's why the social workers like, yeah, he needs our help. Yeah. At one point. So he, then he said he hung out with his friends. And I think my favorite line that I've ever heard 
him say so far. He said, yeah, they were all doing Coke. And I, I turned it, I turned it down. You know, he was like, yeah, I'm going to church tonight, man. I was like, <laughs> that's fucking amazing. No Coke for me tonight. I'm going to talk to God. Right. It was awesome. It, I literally just made me laugh, but I liked how he, it felt good for him to do it and like be around friends and be authentic and not have to like go along with them. You know, I think getting away from her is helping him either get to that or get back to that. I think it was him again, realizing his strength is coming from who he is and how he really wants to be. Not does he fit in and can he play along and do what they do? Right. Yeah. Oh, so there was one thing you said that I was like, "Mm." So rare though, <laughs> when he was talking about, I loved how he was talking about being angry and I had a feeling it was going to be this. Uh huh. Really? Uh huh. That well, so it was cool. He was like, I, you know, having the sense of choice to be angry. And then is this the part, you know, I was going to say when you said <laughs> anger is easier to express. Oh, that's funny. No, I, close. I thought it was going to be when I say anger is a secondary emotion, there's almost always something behind it. Oh, that too. No, I almost did. But then you said there's almost always something behind it. Right. And when you said that, I was like, okay. I have previously said there's always something behind it. Yeah. And I, I, I don't do that anymore. Not because I can hear your voice in my head, but that sure. sometimes you're just angry. Okay. Totally. Anger is an expression of something. And is it an emotion? Sure. I would, again, say it's a secondary emotion. There's almost always something else behind the anger if you look at it, but you can't ignore the anger. That's the first thing that comes out. Right. Like, for example, if someone punches me in the face, aside from the fact that it hurt, I'm fucking angry. I'm just pissed. Like, do I feel disrespected? Not necessarily. I'm just fucking mad, you know, but I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. You might also be literally hurt, uh, embarrassed. Sure. Yes, maybe. All of those things are possible. But what I thought was interesting is that you said anger is easier to express. And my thought is not necessarily, there are people who refuse to express anger, that it's easier for them to always put on a happy face. And again, I am the person who there's anything is easier for me to express than like pain and sadness and vulnerability, whether it's happiness or anger or whatever. But I think there are a lot of people that I have clients where I'm like, get fucking angry, like get angry. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's similar. It's, it's based on what somebody's experience is and what they've seen and what they know. I mean, it's, gosh, I remember back in the days of working in community mental health, we'd have the feelings chart and we'd have to, you know, tell the adolescents and the kids, what's your feeling today? They'd point to the face, like making the correct face. And it's sort of like the emojis that we use now, right? Totally. But this predated emojis. It was like real life emojis. And that, that idea that some people can't really recognize or resonate with that confused face or that frustrated face, maybe happy, sad, angry, you know, they know those, yeah. um, jealous, they don't know, embarrassed, maybe, but expressing those, not just how it looks on your face, but expressing that is really tough sometimes for some people, not everybody. Right. But how do you express feeling jealous? How do you express feeling embarrassed or feeling guilty? How do you convey that with words? How do you convey that with your actions? Totally. Yes. Right. It's hard. It, I think a lot of it involves vulnerability. You know, it's interesting because when I say anger is easier to express, if we, you know, polled people like, how do you express to people that you're feeling jealous? Uh, we don't know. What about embarrassed? Uh, a lot of these things might be directed inwardly. Yep. Anger often, not always, is directed outwardly. So it's, oh, I would throw something, I would kick something, I would punch a wall, I would yell, right? Right. And some people direct that inward also, and it's it can be really detrimental and, and really wreak havoc on our insides, you know, when we do that too. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, we will uh, see what happens next week. So follow us or listen to us or rate us or record us or... Do all the things you know we'd like done to us. <laughs> sort of yeah yeah and we will uh we'll talk at you again next week bye bye